The following videos and pictures are intended as a supplemental guide for installing the TABS 2 heavy duty panel system for thin veneers. Our installation guide should be thoroughly reviewed. This guide is available at our website, tabswallsystems.com. This installation video covers the installation of thin brick over a stud wall with sheathing and building wrap. Other installations may include rain screens and or insulation. The techniques and methods are similar enough that the instructions herein should be sufficient. Specific details are also available at our website. Additional technical support is available at TABS Wall Systems by calling 616-554-5400. The TABS 2 heavy duty panel system will be boxed and shipped to you. Included will be pre-bent corner panels if desired. The panels come in standard dimensions of 2 foot by 4 foot and 4 foot by 4 foot. Thin brick flat and corner brick units are also available from TABS wall systems. Additional components include TABS adhesives, mortar additives, type S mortar, flashings, fasteners, and building wraps. Tools and equipment required include the following. Before starting the installation, the walls should be thoroughly examined for flatness and plumb. Measurements should be taken starting from fixed points like corners, windows, and doors. These measurements will be used in the process of panel layout and alignments. Measuring to the location of control joints will also be noted. Once the lowest starting point for the start of the system has been determined, a chalk line will be marked. This is where the system's starter track will be placed. This starting point should align with brick coursing intervals of 8 inch, 16 inch, 24 inch, and 48 inch, etc. This starting point should be adjusted to course out at windows and other fixed points. The starter track should be a minimum of one and a half inches above grade to accommodate heaving of hard surfaces and wicking of moisture. The starter track's protective film can then be removed once in place. Checking for levelness is critical through all phases of installation. The flashing should be cut at the vertical control joint locations. Flashing can be cut with tin snips or power snips and secured around corners. The top of the starter flashing is sealed with the tabs flashing tape back to the sheathing to ensure that moisture will not find its way behind the flashing. Before installing the tabs raindrop building wrap, all metal flashings should be installed at doors, windows, and other openings. Window and door head flashings will be taped as well. Next, the TABS raindrop building wrap will be installed. The wrap will be rolled out and stapled at a few points to secure. The wrap should drape into the leg of the base flashing. If the wrap is pre-installed, it will be necessary to cut the wrap to install flashings. These cuts will be sealed with TABS contractor tape. Window openings will be cut open and building wrap is folded back into the frames, jams, and sill and then stapled. Seams, vertical and horizontal in the tabs raindrop will be overlapped 4 inches to 6 inches and taped. Next, the window head flashing is exposed, cutting the tabs raindrop wrap at 45 degree angles.
Tab's super stretch flashing membrane is then installed at the sill of the window. Extend four to six inches up the jams and out over the sill and Tab's raindrop wrap. The head of the window is sealed with flashing tape at the head flashing and wrapped at the jams. Once the window is set into the opening, the Tab's raindrop wraps are resecured and sealed with Tab's contractor's tape. At this point, the Tab's panels are ready to be installed. As always, continue to ensure levelness. Fastening of the panels will generally occur through pre-drilled holes that are spaced every 8 inches to accommodate 16 inch and 24 inch stud spacing. All panels at the starter flashing will have the first row of tabs cut away so that the first row of bricks sits directly on the base of the flashing. Panels will be installed with 1 16th inch gap from adjacent panels to accommodate thermal growth movement. Panels will stop at control joints which should occur within 2 feet to 4 feet of outside corners or as designed by the architect. These joints will be a minimum of 3 8 inch. Additional control joints will be determined by the architect. Panel installation will continue across the wall surfaces to completion. The window jams will receive cut sections to complete the panel installation. The flat brick receives two dabs of the tabs adhesive about the size of a quarter. Corner brick will receive three dabs. Starting at the corner, the first corner brick unit is installed. This will continue until a column of brick has been installed. This pattern of columns will occur at corners, control joints, and openings. During the installation, the flexible tabs are pushed down into what will be the mortar bed joints. A horizontal row of brick leading to the base of the window should also start stopping at the control joints. Adjust spacing then occurs to course out. Corner returns at the window jams will then be installed. Cutting brick for these locations may be necessary. The bricks are firmly pressed to the panel. Once the columns are in place, continue placing bricks. The next step is grouting of the head and bed joints. Grouting should start after the adhesive has had 24 hours to cure. Using a ratio of 5 to 1 water to tabs additive, this liquid is blended into a type S mortar. The mortar bag with tip is filled and the pointing can begin. The joints should be overfilled. When the mortar has dried to the consistency of wet beach sand, the joints are struck slightly concave and the brick surfaces are brushed as clean as possible. Before the walls are cleaned, all control joints are caulked and allowed to fully cure. The final cleaning is completed with a detergent recommended by the brick manufacturer. 
The wall surfaces are then rinsed. The installation is then completed.